Um, but so let me write down the name for it because uh, some people might have heard of it. So this uh, arrangement of simple machine, we call this hydraulics. And actually it's a um, part of a working part of a lot of different real life machines. So hi to, I may be misspelling it, hydraulics. So like if you are looking at any heavy machinery, it probably has some kind of hydraulics in there that um, helps people multiply force so that it's like, you know, you can use this instead of gear maybe. And um, old fashioned power steering used also some kind of hydraulic power steering. I think these days uh, power steering in the car is more of uh, um, electric power steering, but old car like mine has hydraulic power steering. And so let me describe just the basic idea behind the hydraulics. And um, this is the kind of setup. Let's use car as an example. So let's say you have a platform that has, um, I don't know, 2,000 kilogram car sitting on it. So it'll be something simple like a tiny sedan that's only 2,000 kilograms heavy. 2,000 kilograms. And I want to say, well, there's some arrangement we can make where um, force that's applied by a single person, let's say you have a guy who weighs, um, let's say he weighs 100 kilograms. A guy who weighs 100 kilograms can lift this car. You might wonder how, and that's the arrangement that you can make with the hydraulics. Let me describe the, the sort of the fluid arrangement that you do have, so that this 100 kilogram person, using his weight alone, can actually lift this uh, two, you know, 2,000 kilogram car. This is the arrangement. You have um, this person standing on some kind of platform, um, let's say, Let's attach it to something here. I'm just gonna, this is my, I don't know. I, I'm using wrong color here. This is my um, a representation of some standing platform. And um, this is already on a platform that's going to be attached here. And these two platforms are connected by a pipe that contains a fluid. So, they are connected by an um, enclosed system that contains fluid. Oops. And so, um, let's see, let me draw it this way. So this is the um, uh, pipe, the left-hand pipe of a smaller diameter that's going to be connected to on the right side to a, a pipe of larger diameter. Yep. Um, and I, I guess uh, it has to be full, um, to, for this to work, you know, it's called the hydraulics because it's probably gonna be filled with water. It needs to be filled with um, what people would call incompressible fluid. A kind of fluid where if you apply significant amount of pressure, the volume doesn't change much. And that actually describes most liquids you know. So this just cannot be air. If it's air, then it would just compress and not do what it, we want it to do. And I'm going to claim that in, with this arrangement, you can have 100 kilogram person standing on a platform that's going to somehow apply enough amount of force that's going to cause this car to rise. And uh, let me try to describe the situation. And along the way, I'm going to describe a principle known as Pascal's principle. But I think uh, without actually naming the principle, it's something that will make intuitive sense to a lot of people. So let's imagine um, you have, before this person is standing here, what would you say the pressure of the liquid 
in this spot is? What would you say the pressure is before there's a person standing here? Like what is the pressure of water here? Is the water here at any kind of pressure? No. Oh, what, which, what kind of pressure? So like water here, is that under any kind of pressure? It's under air pressure. So it's an atmospheric pressure. So I could say this point, initially, the initial pressure would be my atmospheric pressure. Right? And in fact, could you say that for most of this, now, you know, as you go lower, it will be at higher pressure. But as you go back up to surface here, can you say that this is also at atmospheric pressure? Yes? Right? OK, so that's our starting point. Uh, so I guess you also have to imagine there's no car here. Yeah? And this is what I want you to picture. So suppose I've placed a person on here. Then there will now be additional pressure here due to the weight of the person, right? So pressure after. The pressure, so at this same spot, pressure after the person gets on is going to be my initial pressure, the atmospheric pressure, plus the pressure due to this person. Okay? One way to express that would be if I know the cross sectional area here, let me call that A1, then the pressure due to the person would be whatever force this person is applying, call that F1, F1 divided by area one. Right, that's a, how much pressure this person is exerting by standing here. Yeah? And this is what I want you to think through. If the pressure in this part of the liquid is increasing, what do you think might be going on with the pressure in this other part? Can this remain at the same pressure it was at before? Can this remain at simply the atmospheric pressure? Or will it have to change to something else? Change. Why? Yeah, because of the external pressure. Actually, I guess this is uh, how I want you to imagine. You know, you can think of this iteratively. Let's say as the man stands on here, that exerts additional pressure here. And let's say for the time being, that's the only change that happens here. Nothing else changes. Then next to pass around, this is what you're considering. You know, imagine these uh, fluid elements. These fluid elements, pressure on one side of them is greater than the pressure on the other side. So this element is going to get pushed. And you know, the one next to it will get pushed, get pushed, get pushed, get pushed, until that change in pressure kind of propagates through the entire fluid. And at this end, you will end up with the same change in pressure. The pressure at this end of the uh, fluid will be the atmospheric pressure, pressure plus this uh, same additional pressure that was applied here. So F1 over A1. Okay. This is what's known as Pascal's principle. That in a static fluid, any change in pressure in one part of the liquid gets transmitted throughout the liquid. It's because you know, liquid can flow. If there's a pressure difference from one end to the other that's at the same height, then that pressure difference will cause the fluid to flow until the pressure equilibrizes. Well, it becomes equal throughout the entire thing at the same height. Okay? Now, this is what I want you to look at. You have this additional pressure. Now, what is the additional force on this platform due to additional pressure? Is it simply F1? Or is it going to be something different? So you know you have pressure. What do you need to do to get to the force? To get to the force on this platform? 
multiply by area, right? So is it this area that we are multiplying? No, it's the area of this surface that we are multiplying by. So to get this force F2, you multiply by the larger area here. So F2 here, F2 is equal to this additional um, pressure, F1 over A1 times A2. So, so here the force multiplier is the ratio of these two areas. A2 over A1 times F1. So here, with the car being 20 times heavier, you would want this area to be 20 times the area of this. Then the weight of the 100 kilogram man is enough to lift the entire weight of this 2,000 kilogram car. So this is another simple machine. You have a force multiplier that's given by this uh, ratio of the areas because of the way pressure works. So I guess here the challenge would be, so you know, this is why I mentioned the limitation of a simple machine. A simple machine like this arrangement, which has no motor, no uh, sort of external source of energy, whatever energy this car gains must come from energy loss of this uh, 100 kilogram man. Can you see that, that um, amount of work done on the car will be equal to the amount of work that the man is doing. Or I guess the easiest way to talk about it is in terms of potential energy. So however much potential energy this gains is equal to how much potential energy the man is losing. Arjun, can you explain how that makes sense? Like how does that happen? OK, so you are somehow arguing change in height of the car is less than the change in height of the man. How? What aspect of fluid would you bring up to say, because of this, change in height of the car must be less than the change in height of the man, probably by a factor of 20. Steven? Uh, uh, the displacement of the water. Yeah, displacement of water. So whatever volume is gained here, must be the volume that's pushed out here. Their cross-sectional areas are different, but their volume must be, so volume must be the cross-sectional area times the height. So this area one times height one must be equal to area two times height two. So the sort of the reciprocal of the ratio of these areas is the ratio of the height. So if the area is 20 times much greater here, then the height changes 20 times less. So this is another arrangement of simple machine that conserves energy. There's no external source of power. The only thing it does is it multiplies force, but it does it at the cost of reducing the displacement, which means amount of work done is the same. So this is uh, one useful thing. And, um, um, and you know, if we want to give it a name, um, the, it's uh, really the biggest application of what some books call Pascal's principle. Um, good. Any questions about this?